there's a very cool term that we are now using in cybersecurity, and that is the cyber kill chain. This is also known as the cyber attack chain. Uh, it is a model, a security model, that outlines all the phases of a cyber attack. It was developed by Lockheed Martin, but they actually borrowed it from the military. It covers all stages of a network breach, from the early planning and spying to attaining our final goal. If you understand the attack stages, you can then plan your tactics to prevent and detect these malicious intruders. So the cyber kill chain will help us prepare for common online threats, ransomware, network breaches, data theft, advanced persistent threats, APTs. As I said, the origin of the cyber kill chain was from the military. They had this original concept. Uh, it defines the structure of a military operation. So we'll identify the operation. So we'll identify the target. We will dispatch our force. We'll have an order to attack. We'll destroy the target. In the cyber kill chain, we have these stages. We'll do recon, reconnaissance. Then we'll have weaponization. Then delivery of the weapon. And then exploitation of the weapon or the target. Then installation of the actual payload, and then command and control, and then actions on our objectives. Now, depending upon the vulnerability, depending upon the exploit we use, these could happen in rapid succession, where they almost seem to be like three at one time. Let's start with passive reconnaissance. Passive reconnaissance means we are gathering intelligence. We're doing open source intelligence activity. We're going on the internet, and we're not letting the target know what we're doing. We're gathering information. We're not going to interact with the target. We're not, we're not going to interact with the target. We're not going to do anything so the target is aware. We don't alert them. We might be surveilling them from a distance. We could get employee email addresses, social media accounts. We'll focus on establishing who has access to the target. We'll try to map the infrastructure. What tools do they use? Software, devices, their overall security posture. Active reconnaissance, this is where you're going to interact with them to some degree. We'll be scanning them, port scan, vulnerability scan. We interact with the targets to get more information. What ports are open? What operating system or service versions do they have? What policies are they running? What firewall rules do they have? Are there ways to bypass their firewall? Of course, active reconnaissance should set off the target's alarms, assuming that they have alarms. Then there's weaponization. With web weaponization, with weaponization, we're trying to identify, okay, how will we deliver our payload? What will we create or use that will allow us to deliver the attack. We're going to identify or develop a malicious deliverable so that we can attack. It could be an exploit with a backdoor. Some common approaches to weaponization would be, let's use a botnet. You can rent botnets by the hour. Uh, let's create an infected file, like a, an infected PDF or Office document or a video or an app. Let's trojanize them. Let's prepare a phishing email. Let's prepare a server and a landing page for a phishing campaign. We'll talk more about that later. Let's stand up or compromise another machine to house the malware. Let's prepare a Metasploit staging computer, staging computer, for a shrink wrap attack. More on all of these soon. Let's create a virus or a worm. Let's create our own zero day attack. Let's set up a Raspberry Pi and then we'll go and physically plant it in their lobby or something. Let's prepare some malicious USB sticks. We're preparing the weapons. We haven't deployed them, but we're getting them ready. That's weaponization. Delivery, okay, how are we gonna send the weapon to the victim? We could send a phishing email. We prepared the email, now send it. 
We could scatter USB sticks in the parking lot. We could physically plant that Raspberry Pi on their network. Okay, we've sent them the weapon. Now let's exploit. Let's exploit the vulnerability by executing the code on whatever the target is. Often, we'll start with something really small, smaller malware. We'll call that the stagler. We'll call that the stager or dropper or downloader. It's a little advanced party that once it gets a foothold, creates a communication back to us to download the larger, bigger, more destructive payload, the stage. We'll be doing that later on. We've downloaded the weapon. Now it's time to install it. Let's install the malware on the target. You know, the stager downloaded the stage. It's time for the stage to be installed. We might download additional tools. We might hide our presence from the firewall or intrusion detection. We might set up a back door or remote access. Now that we're firmly entrenched in our target, it's time to do command and control. Let's establish a connection back to the command and control server. We've got our malware in there. Maybe it's a bot. We want it to come back to us. We want it to come back to us past the firewall and get instructions on a regular basis, command and control. Now, as the malicious actor, we can operate within the target environment and we can pivot or we can crawl our way through the network, find other targets within that private network. The command and control channel is usually manual. The attacker will have to interact with the malware from the C2 server to carry out the desired activities. Finally, what have you got to show for all this trouble? <laughs> we want actions on objectives. We're going to take specific actions to achieve the original objective. And the original objective is to steal a database, to do espionage, to expand our presence in the target infrastructure, to own that system. So this is the, so this is the idea of the cyber kill chain.